But what we want to do now is we want to create another table, which is these three combined. So check out how we can do this. First of all, we want to we want to reference. We want to reference this table because this is going to be the start. This is going to be the start of all the tables that we uh, then append. So I'm going to create this table. I'm going to put it into my data model, and then I'm going to call this sales because that's eventually what I want to call it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start appending this query to 2016 and 2015. So I'm going to select my sales data table there. And I'm going to select this table here and I'm going to go append queries like so. And then I'm going to append this to 2016. And then I'm going to append it once more to 2015. And then you'll see our first applied steps have occurred. So if on the on the right hand side here, you'll see that every step that we're doing is actually being recorded. And as we're recording them, it's writing some code up here, what is called M code. But what's great about this is it's kind of like a VBA macro recorder, is um, but it's far better because what we can do is we can actually uh, we can actually delete steps if we didn't actually want them to happen. So I can then go and uh, delete those of those if that was an issue and then I can go append queries and I can just do exactly what I wanted to do again because that was just showing an example. So now that we've created our sales table, what we can do is we can make sure that these don't actually get loaded into the data model because we've now recreated the entire sales table out of these initial queries. Remember, these are just queries. These are not committing anything to the data model. But if we did push close and apply now, these all would commit to the data model and we don't need these two because all of this data is now in this table here. So what we need to do is we need to take off the enable load and what happens is it grays out and this table will now, whilst it will remain a query, it will not actually be physically committed anywhere. So it's just going to be, it's going to remain virtual. Now, some of the other things we want to do, we might want to do is we want to say reference, uh, because no changes are actually happening to this table, we probably don't need to create a stage for it. We don't need to do any staging for it. We can just actually bring it into our data model to make, make things simpler. But we've now got the makings of a, 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 a best practice data model. Now the thing that we are, one thing we are missing here is we are missing a date table. So using the date table uh, code, which is in a notepad uh, for in this course, you need to find some M code that looks like this. Now what this is, is it's actually a parameterized qu query. And this is gonna create a date table out of thin air basically. It's gonna create a virtual date table from some parameters that we enter into the query editor. So what you need to do is you need to copy, copy this information, jump back to the query editor, and then create a blank query. And then jump into the advanced editor up in the home ribbon, and copy and paste that, uh, or just paste that into the, um, the area where you, where M code is generally written. And then push done. And then you'll see that this enter queries parameter box pops up. And so what we can do here is we can actually type in, well, we wanna go from the first of 20, the first of the first 20, uh, 2015 to the 30th of the 31st, 31st of the third, 2017. And then we can actually put in what month we want to start our financial year on. And then we just go invoke. And then what that does is it creates this date table with all the different date dimensions that we might want to use in our, uh, in our reports. So obviously we want to change the date, uh, the date table. We want to change it to two dates. So we might actually want to call it dates. And then we want to move this into our data model like so. I also like to create a new group for these because I want to uh, 
make sure everything's catalogued quite well and I want to and I'm going to call this a parameter uh, we'll call this a query parameter like so and we can move that up like so and you see here on the left hand side pane that things are starting to be organized really well what, what happens when you're starting out with Power BI a lot of the time and you're bringing in lots of different tables a lot of the time this can get a bit of a mess and so if you do it like this and you break them into groups it becomes far far more manageable manageable okay so now we've got the makings of everything that we need in our data model let's actually just go through some of the other things that we might need to do before we actually commit these because there's lots of other things that you can do in the query editor now the data here is relatively well uh, uh, in a relatively good good way before we actually commit it so there's not a huge amount we can do but there may be some things like changing column names or changing customer uh, customer columns um, or filtering out information all of that uh, is is can be done in the query editor and so where you do that is you actually say right click um, on a column and you have a number of different options here. So you can say remove columns, you can duplicate columns, and so on and so forth. So what we might wanna do here is we may wanna break out the first and last name of our uh, salespeople, for example. So to do that, first of all, what we wanna do is we wanna run through these steps. So we've gotta duplicate the column, and then if we right click again, you can uh, split the column so we want to split by delimiter here and you'll see here that you can actually select by which delimiter that you want in this case we want to do space so we're going to just go at leftmost just in case there's um, some last names that are two two words or something something of that nature and then we go okay and then now we've got our first name and our last name and then we might want to start, come and change the title name here like so first name and last name like this and then the other last thing we want to do is we want to make sure that there's no spaces around uh, around these names as well so what you want you what you can how you can do that is in transform you've got this trim function and if we go trim uh, transform trim here as well and so those are some relatively straightforward transformations. And then if we look to our location uh, table as well. There may be some, some columns that we don't actually need here. So uh, we might wanna take out uh, type here city because it's all the same thing. So that's not actually very relevant. So I can remove that column. Also area code isn't something that we're going to use uh, within our analysis. Then land area, water area, none of this stuff seems that important. So I'm going to actually delete those columns. And so deleting columns is actually gonna be something that you'll do a lot in Power BI. A lot of times when you go and uh, query information, especially from databases, there's so many redundant columns that you don't actually use in your analysis. And in the query editor is where you should actually take them all out because if you leave them in and they're big tables, then you're gonna take up a lot of room in your model uh, for unnecessarily for columns that you're never going to use either as uh, to run calculations over or to use as dimensions uh, in, in any of your visualizations. So we've made a number of different changes now and as you can see uh, all these changes get recorded in this applied step section and if we jump to the advanced editor you'll see that every single row in the advanced editor also is from each recorded step. And so what happens is it works one after the other. So if you do, it's just like a VBA recorder. If you do, if you do something, say it tries to name it as intuitively as possible. So in this case, it's, it has done an automated change type. It's changed, uh, it's guessed all the different formats or all the different data types of our columns. And then here is what, where it's captured the remove columns. So it's captured that we've removed the type column, the area code, so on and so forth. If you run transformations that are of a similar type all in a row, what it tries to do is it tries to consolidate that information into one row. If you broke these up, for example, so let's delete that and uh, all of those will reappear. If I say deleted that column, but then changed, 
change the column name of something and did a different transformation and then tried to delete more, you'll see here that the code is now longer because you've broken up uh, two similar type um, of transformations. But so when you're actually going through this, it's good to try and do all the, all the things that you want to do. So try and think about all the different types of transformations you're going to make. Try do all the similar ones one after the other because that makes it far more efficient in terms of the applied steps that you'll have here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do and I don't want to change that name of that column as well. So I'm going to just delete the area code. I'm also going to delete the type. And by con clicking control, you can uh, multi-select these uh, different columns and you can remove those columns like so. And then it's what, just one effective line that does all of those for us. Okay, so now we're looking, we're looking pretty good here. We've got, we've, got our, we've got our data model that we're starting to build out. We've consolidated all these different data sources or all these different data tables which had all our sales broken out into um, different areas. But if something is of similar type, like sales or if uh, or location or customers, you want to at all times try and get those into one table. And that's going to make your data model far more efficient if you can do that. You've kind of got to think about, well, how, how am I eventually going to model this? And then your query edits, your querying and transforming is trying to make, trying to shape, shape it into that, trying to shape your data tables into this one big model of all your data, one big efficient model of all your of all your data, and then what we what we're going to do later is we're going to go uh, over how you actually then build relationships and all the different considerations that you've got to, that you've got to have when you're building relationships between these tables. Now, when we come to the date table, we can actually make some further changes in here. So there's there's certain things that we might not actually want to use in our uh, in our modeling. So first of all, we can just delete some columns. So I'm going to delete these columns like date international, um, day of the week, I don't think we're going to use. And then we've got week ending, I'm not going to use that. Uh, and week number, I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to remove those columns. You'll see that we've got these, these odd columns with numbers and you think, well, I'm not going to use those, but we are actually going to use those later on. And that these columns are actually to sort these columns here. And so we need to, uh, if a column is text, but we need it to be in a certain order, then we need a supporting column which provides that uh, index for a sort. And that's what these are here. But what I am going to do is I'm going to change this to a different column name. and I'm going to call it month and year. And I'm also going to call this quarter and year. And then I'm going to make sure that all of these columns that we might use in a particular uh, as a particular dimension are named well. So this doesn't have a space, so I'm going to make sure that that is a space. Uh, these we're not going to use as dimensions, so those are okay. And we might use this one here, so I'm going to put a space there as well. Now there's a few other things I might want to do here. The first thing is I actually want a column which is just the short month. So here we've got we've got the long month name, but we want the short month name. So I'm going to duplicate this column. And then I'm going to split the column by three characters. As far left as possible. And then I can delete this uh, redundant column now. And then I'm going to rename this column here. We go short month. And then I'm going to re rearrange them. So I'm actually going to bring this into um, this part of the uh, of the table. Now there's one other thing I want to do. I might want to actually create quarter one here. So at the moment we've only got quarter and year, but we maybe just want to break out just quarters because that just gives us another dimension that we can slice by eventually. So again, I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to duplicate this column, split it. Split the column by characters as far left as possible for two. And go remove and then now we can call this quarters. So hopefully you can see what we're doing here. We're, we're rearranging a lot of different things 
and we're making small transformations because eventually we're going to use these. We're going to use these in our models. We're going to use these dimensions. We're going to use certain values, etc., to then create all these different visualizations, these and compelling reports that we're we're going to make at the end. And as we go through the course, you'll you'll see how how we can then use these again and again um, in our reports. Okay, so now that we've done this, we can review a few of the other things you can do. So there's 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 a number of different things that you can do uh, up, up up in this um, up in these ribbons. So if we just click on date, you have and you look up here in the transform ribbon, you've got these date selections, and if you go to this drop down, you'll see that you can actually get uh, different metrics on the month, different metrics on the quarter, the week, the day, and so so on and so forth. Um, and if we if if you want to use those in some of your analysis and they're not actually included in this standard date table, well, you can actually create them there. So say for instance, let's just do one. If we wanted to find what day of the uh, day of the year it was, we can then make that selection there. But what it did do is we needed to duplicate it first because what's happened is it's actually overridden our date, which is a very important column in our data model. So we can't actually do that. What we need to do is we need to first. Um, duplicate this column and then we can actually run that transformation like so so if there was some reason why that you needed to create this column you could like so I will say though that you don't really actually need to create this column uh, if you wanted to do stuff by day because you've got you can actually extract the day via a formula index at the end if you really wanted to but this is a good illustration that if for instance there is a is a moment we or is a scenario we need that you you do have the ability to to change that now one other thing that's interesting is that this uh, if you look at these icons up here this is this is some information on how to uh, th this is the data type so what this data type means abc123 is that the Guess by about BI is not correct. So you need to make sure that this is actually text because it is not um, going to help you if it's if it's that unknown data type. Okay, so we've done a whole range of different things in the query editor. And now that we have uh, we have are happy with all what our tables look like, we're happy with all the information in our tables, we can now commit this to the data model. And what it's going to do is it's only going to commit these tables here because these tables here are not enabled to actually load into the model. Only these tables here are ready to be loaded in. Now, if we go close and apply, this is then going to put these tables into our data model, or it's gonna commit them to the Power BI file.